Do you invest your money or own capital assets? If so, then you could be making either long-term or short-term capital gains on those assets. There are some key differences between these two types of gains. And if you're making them, you need to be aware of those differences because this can help you optimize your tax strategy or it could penalize you if you don't know the differences. What's up guys, my name is Carlton Dennis. I'm the host of Taxes Made Simple. And in today's episode, we are going to break down everything you need to know about long-term and short-term capital gains. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, welcome on in. We're gonna start off with what are capital gains. Before we start talking about the difference between long-term and short-term capital gains, we need to go over what exactly a capital gain is. Capital gains are the increases in value of a capital asset over time. Capital assets are pieces of property, such as stocks, bonds, collectibles, homes, cars, and artwork. Many people hold capital assets over time, and often during the period of time that a person holds a capital asset, the value of the asset will rise. It'll appreciate, and a capital gain occurs if a person sells a capital asset at a higher price than the price that they had bought it for. So to understand this, imagine that you bought a stock for $100. And let's say you held that stock for one year and sold it at a price of $200. In this case, you will have a capital gain of exactly $100. Capital gains are the opposite of capital losses, which occur when a person sells an asset for a price that is less than what they had bought it for. So yes, unfortunately, it is possible to lose money when you sell capital assets. Now, let's go ahead and dive into the differences between short-term and long-term capital gains. These are two different categories with two different tax consequences. And short-term capital gains refers to any gains that are made on an asset that you held for less than one year. And long-term capital gains are capital gains that are made on assets that you have held for more than one year. Whether your capital gains are short-term or long-term is relevant to you for tax purposes. This is because short-term and long-term capital gains are taxed extremely differently. Every time you sell an asset and make a profit, you are realizing a capital gain. This means that the IRS considers it a taxable event that must be reported on your income taxes. Both short-term and long-term capital gains must be reported on your income tax returns, but they are not taxed at the same rate. In fact, short-term capital gains are taxed as ordinary income. So you will pay the income tax rate on short-term capital gains that is designated for your specific tax bracket. The higher that your income is, the higher that your tax rate will be and the higher that your short-term capital gains are. For 2021, the tax rates are 10% if you're a single filer and you make less than $9,950 in a year. And then you jump into the 12% bracket. That's between $9,551 and $40,525. The 22 bracket ends at $86,375. And then you have the 24% tax bracket that goes all the way up to $164,925. The 32% bracket goes all the way up to 209,425. The 35% bracket goes up to 523,600. And the 37% bracket is for income in excess of $523,601. So you could be taxed anywhere between 10 to 37%. And it all depends on the total amount of money you make per year. Long-term capital gains are taxed extremely different than short-term capital gains. And instead of being taxed at the ordinary income tax rates, long-term capital gains tax rates are typically taxed at zero, 15, or 20%. If you make up to $40,400 a year, long-term capital gains are taxed at 0%. If you make between $40,000 401 and 445,850, you're in the 15% tax bracket. And if you make over that, your gains are taxed at 20%. So your long-term capital gain tax rate will either be zero, 15 or 20%, depending on the amount of money you make per year. Creating a tax strategy for capital gains, generally speaking, it is usually cheaper to pay long-term capital gains tax as opposed to short-term capital gains tax. And for this reason, many people prefer to hold on to their investments for longer than 365 days to avoid the short-term capital gain taxable event. However, it does not always make sense to try to hold on to your assets for long-term or more than a year. Sometimes you might wanna flip, such as flipping real estate. And if you're flipping a piece of real estate, then it can make sense to try to flip it within a few months as opposed to waiting a few years. This is because you will be able to access your profits faster and you won't have to keep paying the mortgage and other costs such as these heavy loans that most flippers take out. It's all associated with the flipping business. So for many real estate investors, many wholesalers, many flippers who are paying higher short-term capital gains tax can always figure out a tax strategy to help them reduce their tax bill. 
Oftentimes, real estate investors need to be able to take advantage of short-term market conditions, which also makes selling in the short term the better option, even if there's higher capital gains taxes. So this is a way in which we can start planning out our finances and coming up with a strategy. Similar to real estate investors, many stock traders also have the ability to take advantage of short-term market conditions in order to lock in profits. For many of these people, it doesn't make sense to hold on to stocks for more than a year because the opportunity could completely be gone if they held on to these stocks, it could disappear by then. Oftentimes, profit opportunities for these traders disappear in a month, a week, or even sometimes a day. So for these people, long-term holding does not always make sense, even though long-term has the favorable tax rates. Ultimately, the best capital gain strategy for you will depend on your individual situation and whether or not you need to take advantage of short-term market conditions. Some people prefer to hold assets for less than a year. And for this reason, they will always be subject to the short-term capital gains rates, up to 37%. But for those who wish to hold on to their capital assets for longer than a year, will get to experience these lower rates. Other people prefer a mixture of short-term and long-term capital gains. It is not black and white, and there is no one-size-fits-all right answer. But if you're not trying to take advantage of short-term market conditions, then holding on to your assets for more than a year will reap you better tax benefits than selling your capital assets short-term. Many taxpayers are looking for ways in which they can avoid capital gains taxes and just simply understanding the differences can help you. Capital gains for artwork, unlike with most other types of capital gains, art related capital gains are subject to a flat rate of 28%. So if you're trying to sell artwork and report your capital gains to the IRS, you may discover that the capital gains tax rate is just a little bit significantly higher than your capital gains associated with other assets. If you held the artwork for over one year, you'll still pay this 28%. What makes things even more difficult regarding art-related sales is the fact that oftentimes you will have to pay hefty commission fees on top of the capital gains tax rates. And sometimes these commissions are going to the auction house, they're going to private sellers, they're going to other middlemen, and they can be as high as up to 25%. Because the capital gains tax rates and commissions are so high, we strongly consider factoring these in if you're trying to do some tax planning or if you're trying to get into art or make money off of art sales. A lot of people who sell art lose more than 50% of the profit right off the bat due to capital gains, tax rates, and commissions. So keep this in mind if you're thinking about using art as an investment vehicle. To conclude, guys, I just wanna summarize. Capital gains taxes are taxes that you're required to pay when you sell capital assets for a price that is higher than the price that you purchased it for. Capital assets include significant pieces of property, such as real estate, we talked about stocks, bonds, cars, art, et cetera. And there are two different types. There's short-term capital gains and long-term capital gains. Short-term capital gains are capital gains accumulated in a time frame of less than one year, and long-term capital gains are capital gains accumulated in a time frame that is held for longer than one year. Generally speaking, long-term capital gains have lower tax rates, but it doesn't make sense to all investors if they're holding onto capital property to always sell at a long-term capital gain. Thank you guys so much for joining this video, and if you found any value, please remember to like, comment, subscribe. If you're looking for more training on how you can avoid capital gains tax, I have a link below on a free training on how you can use real estate to avoid capital gains tax. I look forward to seeing you inside the training. If not, I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.